For the next part of our demonstration, we're going to start leveraging the Rapid Miner server product. For example, my workflows can be saved in a central location like I have here in the Rapid Miner server based repository. The server based repository, first thing it provides is obviously multiple users can talk to the same server using their own unique username password. These are local username passwords or could be LDAP username and thereby your authentication will be LDAP. Each of the servers can have multiple folders for individual projects and groups and each of those folders could have various levels of permissions. For example, my dashboard developers can only execute some workflows whereas maybe my data scientists can do every single thing. So you'll notice there's a lot of granularity in terms of how you can assign permissions to the workflows. And you can obviously go ahead and assign overriding permissions on subfolders and so on. Once these workflows are available in a central location, they become reusable and certain workflows obviously cannot be run on your regular desktop, laptop class of machines. They need sometimes more computing power. So workflow that was built uh, using the Rapid Miner Studio client can simply be run on a Rapid Miner server by selecting the right option here, by selecting run process on the server. You'll also notice at this point, Rapid Miner is asking you to select from a list of queues. We'll, uh, Queues are nothing but a way to manage resources on the server. A server would be shared between teams and depending on your permissions, you'll have access to certain queues or the queues allow you to control how many of these jobs can run in parallel, how long to wait before the job would be killed automatically if it does not get a chance in the queue. And if there are certain jobs that are of a high priority queue, like the real time scoring queue, they obviously would have unlimited resources taking priority over other queues. So Rapid Miner server ensures that a collaborative environment is available but at the same point making sure that things that need to be prioritized are correctly prioritized. Submitting a job to a server class machine obviously lets you use more RAM and more CPU cores thereby speeding up the whole processing time dramatically. Also it enables user to submit bunch of jobs in parallel to run on the server and thereby get a lot more done in the same amount of time frame that they would have been otherwise not be able to do on a regular desktop class of machine. Data scientists can simply move their workflows from their local developer environment into the staging environment by simply copy pasting into the appropriate server locations. That would be simply done by copying and pasting wherever is the appropriate location. After that, the admins for the production server may be able to run some test or do an automated workflow where they are going to take a backup of our current workflow, move from staging to the production environment with another operator of, from Rapid Miner, and if everything goes well, send a success email. And if not, they can do a restoration of the backup by using one of our move operator and then again sending a failure email. So as you notice, everything can be automated in terms of moving the workflows and the model from one environment to the other. Today we have spent time predicting the flight delay. So let's go ahead and see how you can deploy these models using Rapid Miner. Rapid Miner models that are stored in the repository can simply be dragged into a workflow for scoring purposes. Let's say after that I want to use a read database operator to get the data I really want to score on. I'm going to pick my connection to use and then I'm going to pick the query from where to get the data I want to score on. After this, obviously remember we had done a lot of data prep today. I want to do similar data prep so I'm going to reuse one of my building blocks like before. Then we are going to connect the necessary inputs and ports. And then we'll use a apply model operator, a generic operator that combines the model and the data set to give you the predictions. The apply model is generic enough. So if one of our model management techniques had saved a gradient booster tree or maybe even a linear regression, it is transparent to that. The same operator can handle various, various different models and give you the predictions. Uh, to continue building on this workflow, I'm going to open an existing workflow and discuss what's going on here. So we can have the exact same workflow like we did, but let's say our use case was every single day, whenever we update the weather data, we want to run this workflow and predict the top 200 flights that are going to be delayed. So I've done that here and we can simply now run the workflow either locally or on the server as needed. But obviously running it here is of no good use. So what I probably want to do is at the end of the workflow, when I have sorted based on the decreasing values of confidence and then 
picked up the top 200 flights. I figure out which columns I really want to provide as a dashboard or results set, generate a few extra columns for reporting purposes, and then I can start writing this out to various formats like Excel, CSV, database, Salesforce, S3, and so on. So you can now not only build the models, apply the models, you can take the prescriptive action after that and provide the results in the right place at the right time. And once a workflow like this has been built, you can simply go ahead and schedule as we described earlier at a frequency that is needed. Batch programming works in many cases, but obviously there are many, many use cases where a real time need for predictions is urgent. But in the context of this demo, let's say you wanted to ask the system, hey, tell me the top five flights to avoid if I want to travel between two airports. So what we have done in this workflow is added some context variables. These are nothing but parameters that I'm going to pass. So like the origin, destination, and top, how many airports I want to look at. Every rapid minor workflow can then be converted into a web service by simply right clicking and hitting on browse. That takes you to our server interface. You then go ahead and click on the export as a service option here on the right. We will then say copy from context, which ensures the parameters are in sync and then hit submit to save and create a web service endpoint. We can go and go ahead and test the web service here or edit it further. But to show you this in action, I'm going to call the web service from a browser interface here. We have the web service endpoint. I'm passing in the parameters that I want origin and SO4 and give me the top 20 flights that are highly likely to get delayed. But instead of that, if I say give me the top two flights, I know I should not be traveling on the 10th of April on the six o'clock flight. In this case, we have the data in XML format, but obviously if we need other formats, I could simply go back to my setup page and then decide various formats like JSON, OData, or I could also start creating charts using the rapid miners graphics library and deliver graphical outputs directly to my dashboarding system, whether hosted by rapid miner server or by third party systems. Another technique for deploying models could be providing them as PMML models. PMML write operator basically does that for us. You simply need to plug it in into the workflow, pass it along a rapid miner model and then provide a location where the PMML output should be written and what version it should utilize. Another deployment technique rapid miner provides is the ability to call a rapid miner engine in a command line mode. I could simply do this by calling the rapid miner batch shell script or the batch script that is available as part of the installation. I then need to pass the location of the process I want to run. This location is nothing but the repository location, so I can easily just copy it and paste it there. And then the various inputs that are needed for the workflow can be passed along. This workflow will then start with a headless client mode, run the process and then deliver the results as designed by the process or as configured by the various parameters. So this allows you to run rapid miner in a production mode without any GUI interface on top of it. One another deployment technique that you can also leverage is if you want to integrate tightly with a Java program, rapid miner provides classes to integrate the engine with any Java program. The code looks very straightforward. Uh, I have to initialize the rapid miner engine. I can then pass it along the rapid miner process file. We'll look into the process file in a bit detail here. Then we pass the origin destination macros or any of the variables you want to pass along. If there are specific operators you want to override, you could also go ahead and do that. So you have the flexibility to pretty much control any of the parameters. And then you obviously go ahead and execute the workflow. So this way you can tightly embed a rapid miner engine into any Java application. The one additional benefit you have here is you're going to pass what we call as the RMP file or the rapid minus process file. A rapid minor process file is nothing but a XML representation of the workflows. You can simply see that using the show panel XML option in the rapid minor studio client. Every process internally is represented in a readable XML format. And this is what the Java integration requires. So once you have built a Java integration, you could keep changing the workflow, you could add new steps, you could change the models and whatnot. And as and when you update the reference or rather the actual file that needs to be used by the Java program, you do not need to recompile or rebuild your Java code again. So you could be continuously running this Java workflow and then keep updating the workflows as needed outside the system 
and change the parameters as well as other options needed in real time without having to recompile the Java system. Another common deployment technique for rapid minor users is building what we call as apps. These are web apps that are powered by rapid minor workflows behind the scenes. So for example, here I have a screen where I'm prescribing which weekdays to follow or which hours of the day should be used for departure to avoid the most number of flights. We could also add some simulations and what if analysis to this. So for example, if I say, we will say Atlanta, let's see what the output looks like for that. And maybe if I go ahead and say, if let's say there were 10 inch rain versus five inches of snow versus the temperature dropping by five degrees, what is the output prediction looks like? And here is the output of it. It uh, seems like snow obviously has greater impact towards end of the day. So again, you could build a rich web app for people to provide prescriptive analytics as well as simulations. 